Hello, my name is Sergei Murjevsky, and you're watching Skull Talk. Skull Talk is an exploration into the evolution, the shape, and the function of some of the most charismatic carnivorans of today and recent pasts. We're in seven L's. Come here. A dire wolf has no place in this hole. Incisors at the front, incisor, 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 canine. Premolar, 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 carnassial molar. Molar, molar. Incisor, 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 canine. Premolar, 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 molar, molar. The sagittal crest is very well developed, much more developed than in the modern day gray wolf, and almost akin to specifically the posterior part of it in the spotted hyena. Who was the dire wolf in the context of recent findings? A couple of weeks ago, there has been a complete re-evaluation and a reclassification of the dire wolf. He was thought to be of the Canis lupus group, but now, but now that a recent study has come out, it shows that he really isn't part of that lineage. That means that we have to re-examine a little bit and kind of familiarize with canids. And everything began with little Hesperocyon, a marten type of animal that lived in North America and evolved into its own radiation of Hesperocyonid type of creatures. They could climb trees and exploit a variety of different habitats, giving rise to a whole lot of different shapes. Then came the Borophagine, bone-crushing dogs, giving rise to another very wide radiation, very successful, very diverse, and it was in the borophaging dogs that they gave rise to their most spectacular forms, including Epicyon, which was the biggest canid that ever lived. Most of canid evolution happened in North America. The Hesperocyons were in the North American group, and the borophaging dogs, the bone-crushing dogs, were also a North American group. Throughout that entire time, there was a small-bodied, tiny little canid called Leptocyon third wave of canids that emerged. Some of the most ancient of the recent canids include the Eurocyon lineage, the raccoon dog, and the Otocyon. This iteration of the Leptocyon shape. First and most primitive group of modern canids in the fox direction. Foxes, the vulpine shape. This is the red fox, and that is a fennec fox. With this diversity of fox kind, fox things. This diversity was blooming throughout 
Eurasia, Europe, and Africa. Precise jaw, skull, and quick dashing movement was able to take advantage of a whole wide range of opportunities. Among the basal vulpine shapes in North America, there was a South American, at that time, Southern North American blooming emergence, diversification of canids. The South American canids, the things that were going to give rise to Chrysocyon, Spilothos, Theracodictus, Lycaopex, uh, and Certocyon, which are these South American groups of canids. Introducing Eusion. Eusion was, if you were to think about it, like a like a primitive jackal type of thing. Black back jackal. Eusion was probably very much akin to the African black back jackal. It had a long canid jaw. It was starting to become stronger in its skull, much more developed sinuses along its frontals. Eusion spread across the world, giving rise to speciation events. Eusion bloomed into these different species that we have today. Groupings go as such. Lupulella, the black-backed and the side-striped jackal. The golden jackal. Lycaon, the kuon dole group. The canis group. This is the Coyote Canis Latrans, and this is the Eurasian Holarctic Gray Wolf. Now, the recent paper describes the Dire Wolf as a very distant relative to all of these creatures. He was a much more distant radiation of canids that happened in South America. And it was in South America, before even the Isthmus of Panama connected, that Eusion type of creatures started to evolve bigger size. So the dire wolf should not be thought of like as a wolf. The dire wolf is basically a hyperform of the canids that were already starting to diversify in southern North America at around 5 million years. Therefore, Canis lupus and Anocyon dirus have very little to do with each other in terms of their relatedness. And so it must be rethought what this animal looked like because it was not a giant wolf. 